If you try to use Nano Banana to generate or change your background inside of Photoshop, your entire image is going to be blurry. I'll show you how to fix that issue in this video. And after watching this video, you will be able to change your background using Nano Banana and still get the original quality of your subject. So like this video and share this video with your friend because you are going to learn subject from this video. This is like a free masterclass. Let's jump right into it. Once you open image inside of Photoshop, before I do anything, let me first of all show you how I generate my background or rather how I get prompts I use to generate my background, all right? Now the prompts I use for this image right here, this is how I got it. So the first thing I did, a client actually sent me this collection right here, this boxes collection, and this is the one I use right here, okay? Now, get a reference image. For this example, these are reference image for our background, all right? Once I have my reference image, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to my browser and just come to ChatGPT and just drag and drop this my reference image to ChatGPT and just ask ChatGPT to describe this image in details. So I'm going to write, describe this image in details and just click OK. Now from here, we're just going to be patient and wait and ChatGPT is just going to describe the image for us and that description is what's going to be our prompt. It has finished loading as you can see ChatGPT just described this image for us in details and if you want to read the whole description you can just pause this video and read it. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy it right here. Once I copy it, I'm going to come to my notes and just paste it right here like this and just change this the image. I'm going to change this the image to make the background because it's the background I want to change for my image. So make the background like this. That is the only edit I'm going to do. And just copy this description by pressing on Command C. If I use the Mac, I Ctrl C. If I use the Windows, and just come to Photoshop. Once you come to Photoshop, after doing the scale retouching and everything, duplicate your background layer by pressing on Command J. After that, just press on Command A to select the whole canvas. Once you make a selection of the whole canvas, if you can't find your contextual tags bar up here or anywhere around the screen, so let me just drag this one down for now. If you can't find your contextual tags bar, all you have to do is come to window and just look for contextual tags bar right here. So it should be somewhere around here. Okay, this is it right here. Just look for it and just turn it on and you are going to see it on your screen. So once you select your whole canvas by pressing on command A, just click on this generative fee right here. Once you click on this generative fee, just paste that description by pressing on command V to paste. Once you paste, it's just going to paste everything we copy from this note to this box right here. Now to use Nano Banana, just change it from this FI, this Firefly, to either Gemini 3 Nano Banana Pro or Gemini 2 Nano Banana. So you can play with any one of these two and see the results you get. But for now, let's try with this Gemini 3 with Nano Banana Pro. I'm going to select it and just click on Generate. So what Nano Banana is going to do for us, it's just going to try and generate and change the background using that description I give to it. All right, so let's just wait for it to load and see the results we are going to get. All right, so it has finished loading and this is the result to get. It's not anything related to this one at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try again. This time I'm going to be using Nano Banana 2.5 and click on generate again, okay? As you can see, it's not actually giving me what I want, all right? So I want something similar to this one right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the exact prompt I use for this particular image, all right? So if I come to my notes, this is the prompt I use for it right here. Make the ballad an elegant open cube box. So this was the description that GPT gave me at first. So I'm just going to copy this description and see if I'm going to get something very similar to the first one. So I'm going to come here and just copy it, come back to Photoshop, come back to this image, just change this description right here, press on Command V to paste that new description, change from Gemini 2.5 to Gemini 3 and just click on Generate. So that's the issue I'm currently having with Nano Banana. It's never going to give me the exact same background or the exact same generation, even if I copy and paste the same prompt it's never going to be the same. So I just wanted to know that that is the struggle. I'm hiding it from you guys, all right? So this one has finished loading. You can see 
this one actually gave me something very very similar to this uh, original image right here all right so this is the one i actually edited for the client and this is the one i got right now you can see very similar so this is it uh before and after uh before and after if i zoom in you can see it's looking blurry now this is the issue we are having okay now that we've settled on the background we want to use we have our background right now now the issue right now is the image is blurry and this is why we are here let me show you how to fix that blurry image all right you can see the image is blurry and our subject is looking like a cartoon and we don't want that we still want our original subject to it is sharp and clear all right now to fix that what i'm going to do after generating this background the next step is to remove the subject and leave only the background now to remove the subject i want to press our command a again to select the whole canvas and just come to this generative fee on my contextual tags bar and just write remove subject and click on generate still using google nano banana all right so let's just wait for it to load we're just going to remove the subject and keep the background for us Okay, it has finished loading. As you can see, the subject is no longer the frame. We just have the background, all right? Now, see the before and the after. For me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rename this one. I remove the subject from background. I rename this one with the subject foreground. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hide my foreground layer and my background layer, and I'm going to see my original subject. Now, to apply that background, I'm going to cut out my subject from the background, which means I'm going to be separating my subject from the background. So to do that, you can use any method that works for you, but this is how I do it. I'm going to click on this quick selection tool right here. Once I select this quick selection tool, before I click on select subject, I'm going to click on this drop down right here and make sure cloud is selected so I can get a more detailed selection and just click on select subject. So after making a selection of my subject, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to invert the selection by right clicking and just click on select inverse. Once I invert the selection, I'm going to press up command J or Ctrl J for using the windows to cut out the subject from the background. So if I just hide this my subject layer and my original background layer, you can see we have only the background. The subject is no longer on the frame. All right. So after that, what I'm going to do, I can choose to rename this layer one subject and name this layer two background or BK since we already have a background name. So I want to rename this one without the subject BK. Now the next thing I'm going to do with my subject layer selected, I want to hold Ctrl or Command. I click on this BK layer to bring back the selection. Once I bring back the selection, I'm going to invert it again by right clicking. I click on select inverse. Or as I press the command shift I or control shift I if I use the windows to invert the selection. Once I invert the selection back to my subject, I'm just going to add a layer mask to my subject layer. So I'm going to click on this layer mask icon right here to add the layer mask. Once I add a layer mask, I'm just going to drag this my BK layer which is the layout of my subject below my subject layer like this. Now for what I'm going to do, I want to turn on my background layer. Once I turn on my background layer, I want to select it and just click and drag and drop it below my subject layer like this. All right, so this is the first step. Now it's not looking realistic. To make it look realistic, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my foreground layer. Once I turn this my foreground layer on, I'm probably going to reduce the opacity of this my foreground layer to see the size of this subject inside. So once I reduce the opacity, I can see what is below this my foreground layer. All right. Now I want my subject, this my subject right here, my original subject to be as small as this one inside. So to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my subject layer. All right, which is the layer that contains my subject, and also my BK layer, which is my background layer without the subject. So I'm going to select them. To select it with my subject layer selected, I want to hold command. I click on the background layer, which is this BK layer. Once I select both layer, I want to press up Command C to bring the transform tool. Once I bring the transform tool, I'm just going to resize it to fit that one inside. All right, so make the one inside and this one have the same size. I'm going to match it somewhere around there. I think somewhere around there works for me. Actually works. Let's take it up a little bit. I think it's looking too small now. Okay, so this is where the magic happened. So somewhere around there works for me. I want to click on OK. From here, I'm going to come to the opacity of the foreground layer. I'm going to take it all the way up to 100. Now, this is the trick. Once you align the subjects, what you are going to do from here, with this foreground layer selected, all right, 
just select the layer mask or the foreground layer. Once you select the layer mask, pick your normal brush tool. Once you pick your normal brush tool, you know black is to hide and white is to reveal. Since we want to reveal what is below and we want to hide what is on the mask, what we are going to be doing, we are going to be using a black brush to paint. So with your normal brush tool selected, select your soft rank brush, okay? Opacity 100, flow 100. Make sure your foreground color is set to black, very important. Once you select black, select a layer mask, zoom in, and just gradually paint it away from here. You don't want it to affect like this. So immediately I start doing that. If I zoom in, you can see we are having our original subject back, all right? So just paint like this to bring back your original subject, like so. For the main part of the clothes, I still want to leave it like this. I'm going to reduce the opacity because I still want to make use of the part of the clothes to make it look realistic. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of my brush or the flow of my brush rather and just gradually paint with a low flow. All right, to still get some part of the original clothes while still keeping the generated one. So somewhere around here works for me. Now, let's see the before and after. This is the before and the after. The before and the after. So just look at your image and paint where it needs to be painted, all right? Now what I'm going to do, I feel the color is looking off because I actually like the color I'm getting for this one compared to this color right here. So to fix the color, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my adjustment layer. Once I come to my adjustment layer, I'm going to come to my color balance. Once I come to my color balance, I'm going to come to my highlights and just add yellows to the highlights. I know it's not looking good right now. Also, add rest to the highlights. Maybe come to the mid-tones, just add a little bit of yellow to the mid-tones as well, and just add a bit of red to the mid-tones, all right? Now, after this, what I'm going to do, I'm really going to drag this color balance below this foreground layer, like this, and just clip it to my subject layer. To clip it, I want to hold Option or turn it to body this clipping icon, and just clip it. So basically, it's going to clip to the subject, so the before and the after. Now, I feel the brightness is looking too much. I feel the subject is looking too bright. To reduce the brightness, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my adjustment again, come to my curves, and just take this curve slider down a little bit like this, and still clip it to only my subject layer. Now, I feel it's looking a bit too dark. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to reduce the opacity of the curve, just to bring some brightness like this, and maybe come back this color balance and also reduce the opacity like so all right so let this work for me let me group everything so you can see how before and after check this out see the before and the after the before and the after if i zoom in we still have our subject is still looking good the only problem right now is that the background is not sharp but we don't really care about the background because we are going to be uploading this image for instagram it's not a, we're not putting it just for instagram so it's not going to be obvious so the before and the after now let's look at the original one that i did the same process see the before all right you can see the before and the after see it we still have our subject everything is looking good and intact so this is how you can easily use nano banana ai inside of photoshop without making your image look blurry and your subject is still going to be sharp in this video right here i explain in details how i manipulate my background from start to finish body manual method AZ AI. You can check it out. And also, if you missed the video, like the video and also share this video with your friends. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.